and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Endure Spiders. I've been really impressed with these They Who Endure decks after patch 1.2. On Friday we played They Who Endure with Hecarim and with some ephemeral stuff with uh, Shark Chariot and everything, and I really liked how that deck looked. But as we talked about during that video and just uh, during that day, um, I, I, I wanted to try out Endure Spiders and, you know, play with Elise and with 6 mana Brood Awakening still. Because I think pretty highly of this deck. I think this is a real good deck and I've had some different people ask on like YouTube and stuff like is, is this deck still good and things like that. And I think it is. And so this specific list that we're playing today was a list that I found on Mobilytics, the website that you know I have all of my deck lists on, like whenever, whenever you go to my deck list. On the left hand side, they have not only a, a meta tier list that's updated every Monday, but I don't love a lot of those lists. But underneath it, they have like a meta stats thing uh, that's brand new, that's, that's just been uh, there for a couple of weeks. And according to uh, that site, this um, deck list, when people play this deck list, they have a 71.4% win rate. At least that's that was the numbers on Friday, whenever I looked it up and, and grabbed this. And that's that's incredible. That's a really, really high win rate. Usually if you're like, um, you know, like mid 50s, that's pretty good. You know, like 55, 56, 57, like that's pretty good. If you're into the 60s, that's really good. So a 71, like that's, that's better than anything else that I saw. So I want to give it a try. So I want to play this same list. Um, we're splashing Frell Yord for, for a couple of cards. We got two Everos and Centuries, the two that, are, and then of course the three They Who Endure. The They Who Endure and Atrocity are going to be very important. We got two Neverglade Collectors at the top end to help get us some drain. Our champions are Elise and Callista. Just looking like a just looking like a pretty good list. You know, we're going uh, six one drops, so we're gonna have a lot of one drops. Um, and then of course the spicy Rasa at the top end that hopefully gives us percentage points with players not playing around it too much. So let's let's uh, give it a try. So we're gonna go play five games over in ranked. I guess I should be in play, not collection. Ranked. All right, 600. Here we go. Let's see how it does. I, <clears throat> I think these decks are, are pretty good. They're kind of difficult to stop, especially with... I think they go bigger than a lot of the other mid-range decks that are around right now. <laughs> However, with this being said, Fiora is... Fiora is definitely a bad matchup. Just in general. Um, yeah, this is not a good Fiora matchup. So basically, the problem here is that our deck strategy is playing a whole bunch of um, little things that die in combat, and eventually we have a big they who enter. Well, if we have a bunch of little things that die very easily, this deck is built on killing little things with Fiora. If they don't have Fiora, we have a good chance. It's just, if they have Fiora on turn three with a lot of protection for Fiora, we're probably going to lose. So hopefully not. Maybe they have... Maybe they're playing a game where they didn't actually draw Fiora. Is that possible? No Fiora. Uh, I don't think it is possible. So I kept Glimpse Beyond, because Glimpse Beyond would be one thing that uh, would count as like one thing of Fiora killing. Careful. You don't know what's out there. Like, you know, like we get to Strike quickly, try me. Glimpse Beyond a sacrifice. I'm going to let this one happen though. With the Elise, I won't glimpse beyond that. Because I like the Fiora being at one loyalty. Or one health, I guess. Not a planeswalker. Being at one health. <laughs> yeah. Whoops, wrong word. No 
Promising to hold me back? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably a loss. I'd be very surprised <clears throat> if we could win this. Can't be very surprised. Nothing escapes my watch. Basically, if I play Glimpse Beyond, I'm not doing anything else. Or I could not play Glimpse Beyond and play the Wraith Caller. And then Glimpse Beyond next turn, like whatever they challenge, I Glimpse Beyond that. <laughs> Too easy. Hey, Thorwolf. Unfortunately, they did have Fiora. We missed. I am doing well. I am doing well. Thank you. There's a they hill in there. I wouldn't mind more glimpse beyonds. I assume we got all three of them. Really? The Tain? Alright. Yeah, we have all three of them. Hmm. The deck code is right here. Hey, thanks, Smoke. Glad you're enjoying the YouTube comment. Thanks for stopping by as well. Come, come this way. Uh, we got a little bit of removal, I think. Let's see, what do we got? We got a bunch of withering whales and vile feasts. Okay, so not really. <laughs> There's one vengeance. game. Unfortunately, Fiora is kind of our kryptonite, especially Fiora with all protection, you know, like just the all-in Fiora deck. So that's an unfortunate matchup, and they did have Fiora on turn three, and so I couldn't quite kill them in time. Oh well, GG's. I don't know I don't know how that, that deck's supposed to win if they don't have Fiora on turn three. Like do they just lose every single game they don't have Fiora on turn three? One and like every game that Like how else do that how else is that deck supposed to win? Like what if your opponent's not really even playing creatures for for you to kill a Fiora? No, the tech just doesn't seem very good. But it defeated us. That 
leg. Did it move? Um, yeah, I like I like that idea, Diveman. Bannerman was said Juani instead of I. Yeah, I mean I I've been like Diveman. Did you see the Did you see the Lucian Fury deck that I play? Have you seen that deck? I must get out of here. Because that's close to Bannerman with Sejuani, um, but it, it's not quite playing Bannerman. I'm playing Babbling Beard instead of ba Bannerman, and then, um, you know, like Omen Hawk is another one drop. Sejuani, and then Fury of the North. Okay, yeah, you saw that. Yeah, so I think I think you can kind of do the same thing, though. Yeah, if you want to make it more Demacia and Bannerman. And then just play Sejuani at the top end. I like it. Like, Sejuani is super powerful. You you still have... Like, Demacia still has a lot of good 5-mana cards. Like, it's okay to have... I think it's okay to have Scythria and Sejuani at 6. And... Then, you know, at 5-mana, you can go with uh, Please, Radiant Guardian. Sense. And... All right, I'm gonna vile feast this. They they obviously want to turn on plunder or get a Sejuani trigger. Like they want that pretty bad if they're making that attack. We, we shall not rest until all betrayers behave. Um, yeah, you have like this the Lancer. You know, like the Lancer is a great five drop. You could play Garen and Sejuani, and you could have Garen as like your other. Um, as like another five mana card. I think you could do that for like your top end, have like Swiftwing Lancer, Garen, Sejuani, and Scythria. And then fill it out with Demacia. Yeah, you don't want to cross me. That's a great Yordle Grifter. A 4 mana 5-5 five, five, plus steal your card plus create a warning shot. That's a pretty great Yordle Grifter. So this is something that the people need to just kind of start learning is that you can't like... I can see this warning shot. They, I can see the one that Yordle Grifter created. I can't see the other one. So they just cast the other one from their hand. Or they could have just cast this one that I knew about. Like, all they're doing is just giving me more information. Alright, so we stole a Warden Spray from me. Okay, you tried the Siren Burn deck. Felt like a 50-50 deck. That sounds about right. Do you think the Siren might be too slow? I was thinking about trying Jinx instead and, some, and some changing some other stuff a little bit accordingly. Um, <laughs> I Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I kind of felt the same way that... Uh, the sirens are a little slow, um, so yeah, you could definitely try, definitely try out Jinx instead if you'd like. I have nothing against that. What if I should just attack with Callista as well and just let them trade with Callista here, because then we'll still get a lot of other damage in, and with us having Atrocity Neverglade Collector, like maybe I'm supposed to just sacrifice Callista. How is Warden's Prey not blocking? Okay. Home. Seeker Conservator. Uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, I put the Wraith Callers, whenever I attacked, I put the Wraith Callers at the end of the line because the, the Wraith Caller is like the best thing to block Safety. with the, the Yordle Grifter. So I want to put the crappy things to block first so that we get those like that damage in first. Um, I think that's usually like the safe, like the best thing to do. Uh, hmm. I do want to play another Neverglade Collector. I guess so. I'm, I'm definitely considering playing a lease over the spider, because then we could just attack with a lease and a spider. Okay. We, we have no mercy. So yeah, Swear Slow asks, like, why am I playing Warden's Prey and Brood Awakening? <clears throat> Basically, this list... This specific list was from Mobilitics, um, you know, the site that I've had my decks on and everything. And according to their meta stats, this list has had a 71.4% win rate since the patch. And, and so I wanted to give it a try. Um, but yeah, we, we did face, you know, a real tough matchup, I guess, with all in Fiora. And they had Fiora. So that was our... First loss. Yeah, I kind of okay. Valerian Blade. I kind of like that. Have a Noxus Freljord deck with no five plus power cards except for Leviathan. So Babbling Bjerg. Always draws. So you play Babbling Bjerg to draw Leviathan. Leviathan draw Swain. I feel like you can still play such. I feel like. Like, what's your other champion? In that, because it, it probably should be Sejuani, which that would still be fine. You know, grabbing Sejuani or Leviathan. I feel like that's still good. So this looks like a spider aggro kind of thing. So I kept both hapless aristocrats. Out from the darkness. Do y'all think I should be attacking with hapless aristocrat right now? Like let them kill aristocrats to do one damage there. I was thinking no because like, we go Callista next turn. We want more bodies to die after Callista. Yeah, I think it probably would have been fine, a fine attack, too. I think it would have been just fine either way. Probably without Callista, this probably is a good attack. Oh, okay, okay. So you built it, so you had like a whole lot of cheaper things um, to try to survive early game versus aggro, because so yeah, you did it before the patch. Okay, and then just have that for your top end. Who'd you use for your other champion, though? And or did you have another champion? We, we shall pierce their treasonous hearts. Okay, you just had Swain at the time, but yeah, you agreed that it would make sense to play. So 
set to Polanyi right now. Ooh. All right, so what are we doing? Are we gonna go mist or wraith caller, or are we gonna go triple? Are we gonna go just straight to attacks, or we want to triple spell sentry, aristocrat, warden's prey? Let's triple spell. Let's triple spell. Get a lot of attackers in here. Like definitely level up Callista. That egg. Did it move? Quite the dish, aren't you? I have three copies of Misfortune, Ash, Lux, Leeson, Zed, and Jinx. Gotta get out of here. Beyond Sejuani or Ezreal, because you're not a fan of those two. Which champions, in your opinions, are necessary to build good climbing decks? I honestly think that there's so many things that are like pretty even that you can be climbing with. Like, I don't think there are, like, necessary champions for good climbing decks. I don't... Um, you know, if that makes sense. You dare! The rose shall find their vengeance! As far as what you have... Um, you know, Misfortune pairs real well with Quinn. If you want to go that route, um, Lux. I like like that mage, the Mage Seeker deck with Lux that we played the other day, with uh, a Callista and a couple of Threshes. Um, I don't really have a great Lee Sin Zed or Jinx deck. Yeah, we do have too many 1-1 minions. I was thinking about casting the Withering Whale. I kind of wish I did. I made crowd favorite not as big. No, I wouldn't say it's game over if you don't have Mage Seeker. Their uh, Remembrance. No. Your deck is better with Remembrance, but it's not a necessity. Just leave me alone! Please, I have connections! Ready the torches! Oh, 
Avaros and Sentry might be my biggest thing that's died as far as Callista is concerned. I kind of feel like it is. Yeah, it's Avaros and Sentry. attack. Okay, let's see. What are they going to do? Block, block. I must get out of here. Yeah, it's, yeah, we can send a spider in. We can send a spider in. Even though Avaros and Sentry is just a 2-1, it's still not a bad one to have with Callista because we get to draw a card. Yeah, so yeah, we'll draw we'll draw a card whenever. Like it still has the last breath draw one. One of us dies. Hey, Acid Swift. Okay, yeah, Thornwolf, if you really like those Mage Seeker decks, if you haven't, check out the Mage Seeker I deck, deck I played the other day. I'll link it to you in chat. Here's the YouTube video. So I'm down to five. Five seems like a good life total from BF. Alert the village. Y'all think they're gonna have instant speed life gain? Like Withering Whale? Certainly possible. Could just play the Brood Awakening right now and just kind of be patient. I have three great options with Withering Whale, Atrocity, and Vengeance. Three great options. Please, I have connections! Your death has been ordained. If I try Atrocity and it doesn't work, I just... I probably lose if it doesn't work. Basically, if they have like a, if they have anything that breaks it up, it's a lose. Where if I just vengeance here, it's a lot safer play. I'm not dead to like their atrocity, even though their atrocity would kill my Callista, and that'd be a problem. Probably didn't need to block with the Callista. I think we're still doing fine. 
We got more cards. They're out there. I'll spot them. The garden. Well, that worked out. Because they had to do something because I, I did have... If they don't play that, I have lethal. So yeah, it looks like I probably did have lethal with the atrocity for the Callista. That's alright, we played it safe. Played it safe. So how's everybody Sunday going? Or just weekend in general? You know, I didn't I didn't see y'all yesterday. Mine's going pretty good. I need to I got, I got chores I gotta be doing today, though. Uh, so just going with the four decks instead of five, even though we could do five because I'm still a little bit behind with the videos. Um, maybe I'll do five tomorrow to, to catch up fully. I think this is a good mulligan hand. Good hand to mulligan everything. Thanks, Emre. I got laundry to do, oh, that egg. Did it move? and um, most importantly, my lawn. I need to cut the backyard. It's been raining a lot here recently, and oh, what's that noise? I mowed the front yard uh, the other day, but then it started sprinkling again Like while I was finishing up mowing the front yard, so I didn't get to mow the backyard. But with it mowing so much now, my backyard, the grass is getting real tall. So I really gotta mow it. There you go. Nice. Enjoying a day of relaxation and looking for new deck ideas. Perfect. Uh, speaking of perfect, if I had one more mana. Great withering whale. I don't even know if I do that. I could just withering whale and kill that thing. Oh really, Gucci? Yeah. Do you want to send me your your list that you're playing, Gucci? I'll I'll give that deck a try again. Um, yeah, Gigi says that they have a really good win rate with Mage Seeker, Lux, the Heimerdinger version. I think that's the original Mage Seeker Lux. So at two toughness, if they want to block, yuck. They were trading. Yeah. I was gonna wither after they played that. I was gonna withering whale. No attacks. I must get out of here. Are on the attack. Yes, you. 
All right, so Thresh just levels up. I suppose. Who's Thresh gonna bring? Darius? Ugh. I don't like this. Why'd they have to play Thresh? Okay, Gucci, yeah, you just made it a donation deck. Alright. Do you want me to play it on tomorrow morning stream, Gucci? And if so, uh, which slot do you want? You know, like one, two, three, four, maybe five if I, if I go five. Second slot tomorrow morning. All right, cool. So I didn't play the Elise because I thought the Elise was like a really good thing for Thresh to challenge. It's a good block. I was, of course, hoping that they would kill my 1 1 so that my 4 2 would be able to block Thresh. This is going to pull another Darius out there. I guess we got to play one. Got to play that thing. No, I don't want to. Looks like we're going to lose this game, which I feel kind of bad about. I feel like we would win this most every time, but like this is like the one way we can lose.
I would I would love to to replay this matchup. I'd, I would love to. I mean, I think that we would win fairly easily most of the time. It's just this every, everything really lined up for my opponent perfectly. But I think we're we're basically doing similar things, but I think we're doing it a lot better. But they got that one. All right, so we're two and two. Yeah, so, so, sometimes you're like two and two, and you think that's that's about right. Or sometimes you're like, man, we, we're pretty lucky to be two and two. And this, I feel like our deck is very good, but we're two and two. Um, I don't even know if I even want Vile Feast against a Crimson deck. I don't think I do. The one thing I haven't liked about the deck, there's one thing I haven't liked about this deck, and it's the removal. I don't like the all we have are like Vile Feast and Withering Whale. I don't like that. Like those those two cards haven't really looked very good. I can see the Devastian border from here. Hey, Shade. I wish we had some larger removal spells. For the homestead. Light the signal fire. Things that not just kill one ones. Like our our deck's really good at blocking one ones anyway. And I don't like how all of our removal is designed to kill like one toughness things. These stories were true. Yeah, and so basically, yeah, I wish we had a little bit more Grasping and Dying, Vengeance, and also Ruination. Leveled up there, Vladimir. No, Vladimir is their only champion. Vladimir Yetis. He had a really good solid hand. We again mulliganed all of our cards. I pull the strings. It's 
It's definitely what we're missing. Actual removal spells. Who would dance? Yeah, I'm not really expecting to to win this as it is it is looking grim. We must all make sacrifices. Great hand. Jeez. You got me. Okay, so while I like Okay, so while I think that they who endure decks are very good, and as we talked about at the beginning, I'm using this list from Mobile Addicts, I do think that our list has uh, some weaknesses. Oh, we have Caretaker in here? I forgot about that. Man, we have all these one-mana cards, and we were really mulliganing a lot. Anyway, I... Yeah, so um, what I would kind of be doing with this is probably moving it back towards... Uh, some more of the things that we had with the Hecarim and Dur. I, I do think that, I mean, I don't, I don't really understand how you play this deck without Ruination. I think that that's just a, a necessity that you should be playing, um, at least one Ruination. All right, but anyway, let's go back to, to this deck. Like I, yeah, I, I don't think that there's any reason to play this deck without playing a Ruination. Um, it was honestly like the two mana slot was kind of bad. Like, I think there should be Wraith, uh, Mist Wraiths in here, right? Like we have, we have three Elise and two Averroes and Centuries. That's not very many cards to be playing on turn two. We, a lot of the time had, we had like no ones and no twos a lot of those games with, you know, hapless aristocrat wardens, but like. That's kind of rough to not have any of those for a lot of those games. And so basically what I'm saying is that I think we need more things to be able to play on turn two. Um, and I think Mistrace would be really good to have. Like when you're playing Wraithcaller, I think having Mistrace also um, works out. Uh, I haven't really decided if I like Neverglade Collector in these decks, honestly. I kind of feel like Neverglade Collector isn't good enough. It's, it seems just really expensive, and by the time like you're playing it, your your board's already filled up with so many other things, and it doesn't really feel like Neverglade Collector in these decks is, um, you know, really pulling its weight at five mana. I think I would get rid of it. If you have Mithrace in here and a Ruination, you can get rid of a Withering Whale, get rid of like a Vile Feast. I don't, I just don't love those cards. I do like Blighted Caretaker a bunch. I kind of forgot that we had this card in here, honestly. Just haven't really, you know, didn't really draw it since like the first game. I just forgot about it. I'm not sure if you need all of these one mana cards. Um, and also Rasa. Not completely sold on Rasa either. To be honest. But this, these are like some small changes that I would start with. And kind of play some more games and, and go from here. Um, putting in... Uh, putting in Mistwraith 
and Ruination. I, I think that if you're playing this kind of, if you're playing a They Who Endure Shadow Isles deck, I think you should always, always have one Ruination in your deck. I, I think it is just categorically incorrect to not have a Ruination. Which I guess I, I could have done that before the video, but I wanted to play the exact list that they had. Um, so besides this, uh, you know, if you're kind of looking like the four and five mana slots are, are a little weak. And, you know, we have a lot here. I think we could probably trim a little bit at one mana. And that's probably Warden's Prey. Like if you trim one warden's prey we can get another four or five mana card i think there could be some more a couple more four and five mana cards in this deck and what i'd be looking at is probably chronicler of ruin because of the combo with wraith caller and just you know like our combo with callista it's also killing another thing for they who endure i think chronicler of ruin's awesome i don't think that's, that you even have to play and of course like the avaros and century combo i don't think you have to even play like a dedicated you know deck that's like like, we're not trying to necessarily always set up Great Chroniclers of Ruin and have three of them and all that kind of stuff. I think it's just a nice, like, little one-of to have access to, even if you're not playing um, uh, Cursed Keeper and things like that. I think it's still just a good card to kind of have in the mid-game. So there we go. That's that's a little, um, a little change, a few changes that... Um, I would recommend doing. Um, so here you can kind of see the, the final list again. We took out a Warden's Prey. Um, we took out a Vile Feast. Took out one Withering Whale. So those three. And then took out two um, Neverglade Collectors. So that's five cards. And instead we're playing three Mistwraith, one Conqueror of Ruin, and a Ruination. All right. But that's Endure Spiders. Um, even with six... I guess the, the final thing to talk about is even six mana Brood Awakening. I think it's just fine. I don't think that, that really changes this deck too much to be five or six mana. I do think that six mana Brood Awakening you, means you don't really want that card in uh, control decks as much. It's not, it's not as good in control decks where you're just playing it for blockers. But I think it's just still just fine in this They Who Endure deck and a deck with Elise. All right, uh, that's Endure Spires, first deck of the day. Um, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, leave those comments as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned some stuff. Let, let me know what you think like of these changes that I made afterwards and, and that kind of stuff. You know, if you're, if you're playing this deck um, a lot, feel free to, uh, yeah, let me know about... Um, what you think of, of these changes and just other cards that you're playing that overperform in this archetype. Leave those comments. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.